So good. you're here at Wanstead Arts Fringe for two nights. One's worth. One's worth. <laughs> Did I say Wanstead? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, Callum Rockshaw. Yes. How are you? Very good. A bit hot. But yeah, hot. feeling good. Feeling really, really good. Yeah. Tell us about it. What's it Feeling very called? euphoric. Uh, the show is um, it's called Sonder, and uh, I wrote it myself uh, about two years ago. Um, and it's, it entails seven uh, characters and eight different monologues. Um, and it's all about, so each character uh, is based on people that I've met or a collection of people that I've met that have kind of met, met, metamorphosized into one character. Um, and yeah, so each character represents a different uh, generic fear that I have in my life and um, having researched the show and, uh, and you know, when I was writing it, I spoke to loads of people about it and a lot of people found that they resonated with the characters thoughts and complaints and feelings and stuff like that. So I thought um, I wanted to make something firstly resonant, but something quite relatable, um, whereby people could relate to the character's fears, even though that the characters present the fear in quite a heightened way. Um, yeah, so, so the audience would feel less, uh, feel less of an uneasiness in life from feeling these, um, from feeling this relative fear that these characters feel. So you, how does it feel for you to perform it each night? Is um, it... It's terrifying. <laughs> um, but um, ironically, the show is about subsiding fear yeah. and not letting it control you. Um, we'll always have fear in our life, but um, it's, it's about letting it be a tool as opposed to a master, so to speak. Um, so, <laughs> so when I become fearful of performing it, um, it's quite an ironic thing, but I just remember that, that the show is all about that and that there's no, not that there's no room for it, but that the fear doesn't really help the show. It's the liberation from fear that does help it. Um, it is absolutely terrifying. Um, but at the same time, I think after you kind of, after the, it's the same with any show, when you're standing in the wings and you're feeling really nervous and, um, you know, that, it's that sort of moment before the calm before the storm, so to speak. Um, but as soon as you walk on, I think most actors or performers and stuff like that, will creative people will, um, will, will hopefully agree with me when I say this, it's like as soon as you go on, you're just there. You're just doing, you know, something that you've written, um, a subject that you really like talking about, performing in a, in a creative discipline that you really enjoy performing in, and to people that you really enjoy being with. Um, so it's to focus on that enjoyment as opposed to the fear of it going wrong. Because um, if it goes wrong, it's always my fault. <laughs> it's not like you're in a play, you can blame, um, blame him or her, you know. It's always your fault. Um, so you've got to, <laughs> so, and having that knowledge that you will have to, that you have to have your own back, I think it's the scariest thing. But, um, but ultimately, you know, it's, it's having that ownership of it, knowing that, you know, that you can subside these, I call them mistakes, um, but they're only mistakes if the audience visibly see that it's a mistake. And how have the audiences responded to it? Uh, so far, so good, yeah. I've, I've been performing it for about two years now, and um, yeah, the, the generic feeling is that, yeah, is, is amazing because the, the, the responses that I get were what I wanted in my head when I started writing this. I wanted them to, to be. And, you know, they, they surpassed that, um, that expectation of what I wanted to get from the audience. Um, so it's done better than I, than I ever thought it could have done. You know, because, um, well, a bit of a tangent, if I may, but when we first performed it, uh, we, we had the performance slots of the theatre, and it was my business partner who was supposed to do her, her solo show, and I was going to direct that. And then we ended up swapping. So I had a month to, you know, market it, um, devise it, rehearse it, learn it, create all the, you know, I'd written all the characters, obviously, but, you know, physically um, creating them. You know, in about 30 days, we had to actually get it performance ready. So, and I think that, that was a kind of nice sort of kick that I needed, because I, I don't think, um, at this point, I think two years later, I'd like to think that I would have done it without that kick, but 
it wouldn't have been for a, for a while had it not have been for that. Just, let's do it. Don't think about it, just create the show, just do it. And um, I got such, I got so caught up in, you know, creating it, trying to get people to it, um, in learning, learning all of it, you know, remembering everything that I've got to do. Um, and then the release after, after it had finished, the first time we did it, was just, I never felt that great, you know. Because um, it was the release of, you know, because the show's very, very personal and very vulnerable. Um, but it's the fact that I'd done it, you know, because it, it was always um, a personal challenge to myself that I wanted to do. But, um, yeah, very, very, very happy. <laughs> so what can people expect? How would you, would you describe and pitch the show to somebody coming to watch it? Yeah, so uh, it's a 45-minute roller coaster of physical theatre, dark clown, or bouffon clown as its official name. Um, expect to laugh, to cry, to have fun, to laugh at stuff, um, to, to not laugh at certain things and then to laugh at things that you wouldn't normally found that you would have laughed at. Um, and yet, yeah, just to take 45 minutes out of yourself and just to see uh, these weird and wacky and grotesque characters um, portraying a fear that you probably feel in life. Tell us a bit more about some of the characters. Yes, so there's seven characters. The first one is uh, the actor, which as you would have seen uh, is semi, is quite autobiographical. Because um, I, wanted, I wanted that um, to, to be the first one so that I could get the audience on the clown side, the, the dark clown side, which is quite hard to do. Um, so if you get them on your side, you know, when they kind of go, not even if they're actors, you know, similar careers have different, have similar pitfalls to, to what a creative person um, goes through. Um, so people can resonate to that and they kind of get where I've come from personally. And, um, and here I am in this moment about to tell the story. Um, the second character is called Karen. Uh, who is, uh, is an old lady uh, from Edinburgh with uh, a dog called Hammy, who is a frog, a cross between a French bulldog and a pug. Um, on that, because um, when I was writing that, uh, there, there's a dog at, at, a, at a pub that I used to work at that's a frog. Um, that's how I found out that this breed, that this crossbreed existed, and <laughs> it's the most adorable thing. Um, so, I, so when I was writing that, I was researching the characteristics of those two different dogs. And yeah, it said, um, yeah, French Bulldogs are playful, affectionate, alive, and the pugs are playful, stubborn, and docile. I thought, that's amazing material. I have to just do something with that. I don't know what, but then eventually, of course, that um, morphed into Karen. Um, uh, yeah, then you have Becky, who's a um, 27-year-old from Lancashire who's uh, desperate to find someone to share life with. Um, you also have the child, um, who's kind of been uh, trapped <laughs> by a sort of esoteric, mysterious voice. Um, you have Charlie, uh, the kind of politician, because I wanted, with, with that, I wanted to make a character that essentially ruled the world. I thought that'd be a really interesting as an actor, you know, that'd be and as a writer, that'd be a really interesting archetype to explore, you know. Um, you know, because what if every conspiracy theory in the world was actually true and that there was some sort of puppeteer behind all of it? I thought that'd be an amazing idea to, to just explore. And yeah, it's just so much fun to play. And yeah, he's one of the, him and Becky are one of the two favourite characters from the audience response. Um, and then you have the, the therapist. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, fun fact about him, because um, when we did it the first time, his, that, that character didn't exist. It was just um, six characters, um, all of them except for him. And uh, the second time I did it, we added him in, and he was actually a robot. So very, very different character shape. Um, and then yeah, and then me and Scott would, uh, were working on it, and then we and we then Scott had the idea of making it into a therapist, just because I wanted to have a character with some sort of outside point of view from people. And I thought, firstly, I thought robot would be okay, an okay sort of idea, um, but then I thought therapist is better because they have this sort of 
they distance themselves from their clients and from people through their knowledge and through their profession. Um, so I thought that was, so that worked a lot better for this, I think. Um, and yeah, and then and then the actor comes back at the end where the kind of clown um, nature is kind of dissipated, and it's kind of just essentially me. It's just a simple clown, uh, very very natural, very very you know the rest of the place kind of gone, um, and it just becomes very very honest. The last section is scripted. Uh, yeah, yeah. So scripted, but um, it feels very kind of organic and natural. yeah. Um, that, that was another thing that me and Scott worked on. Because um, it, it's essentially the same, more or less the same character as the very first monologue. But um, the symbolic thing with that is that the, the performer's uh, performative persona has kind of melted away. Um, which, is, which is a kind of little personal journey that most creative people kind of go on. Um, you know, because it's an industry of people and of course you know, your talent is something that uh, a lot of the time is worn as a mask. Um, whether that's to gain, you know, validation or, you know, to, um, in the belief that it will further your success, but ultimately that mask has to melt off over time to become the person that you really are, deep down. You just mentioned Scott Lacrasse. Yeah. Who directed the piece. Yes. So, how's that collaboration come about, and how's it impacted the play from where you started off with it? Yeah, um, so Scott's the third director that I've had um, with Sunday now, um, and each director has brought their own, you know, really, really beautiful insight into it um, that has kind of contributed very, very much a 50 50 creative input into it, even though it's, I wrote it and I'm acting it, it's still very much a. Um, a co-devised process. Um, so yeah, me and Scott met, um, started working together on Never Trust a Man Bun, yep. um, which of course is, you know, imagine, very, very different <laughs> to this. Um, but yeah, we were speaking about it in rehearsals, um, and I sent it to him, and uh, I was kind of nervous to see what he thought of it. Um, but yeah, he, he said that he liked it, and, um, and yeah, plus I loved working with Scott on Never Trust a Man Bun, and I thought, well, it'd be really, really good to utilise Scott's amazing directing with this. Because I think I, last time I performed it, I wasn't too happy with it. Well, you're always never 100% happy with your own stuff because, you know, we're, we're all perfectionists, you know. It's, it's, it's never 100% there. It's, it's always 95% there. But Scott um, really, really helped me because I wasn't very happy with it at one point and I didn't really see a future with it, but Scott, um, Scott made me realise that we actually had a show again and kind of, yeah, we kind of went back to the drawing boards and, um, and yeah, just more or less sort of started from scratch um, on top of the foundations from previous performances and um, yeah, it's an amazing job. So, I'm very so you're here at Wanstead Arts Fringe for two nights. One's worth. One's worth. <laughs> Did I say Wanstead? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. See here at One's Worth. Don't go to One's Don't go to One's Dead. One's Worth. Is that the place? I think so. I think so, yeah. I think so. It is now. It is um, now, yeah. I want to be there. You be there as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yes, it's at the One's Worth uh, fringe. Um, the final night is tomorrow night uh, at 9 o'clock at the Cat's Back pub. And then, have you got any plans to take it anywhere else? Um, I need to save some money okay. now. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yes, um, yes. Uh, my dream um, is to take it to Edinburgh. Um, kind of just to take it to as many places as it, as it can. Um, I think once, you know, if, if and when it does go to Edinburgh, I think that will be it for, for Sonder. Because I think, you know, everything has a shelf life. But... Um, uh, at the moment, with Into the Fire, I'm actually writing a new piece, not a solo show, but um, that'll be an ensemble piece on uh, masculinity. Oh. So that'll be a clown piece, so a similar writing style to Sonder, but that'll be with four people. So, um, yeah, I've been writing that for about a year and a half, so <laughs> can't be much longer. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, so with the company and stuff like that, I want to very much, you know, broaden it and um, work with more people that are like-minded to myself and want to make work like this. Because, um, I've, yeah, I've always wanted to make theatre challenging, you know, because people think that theatre is something that has to be enjoyed. Um, not that I want to make something that people wouldn't um, enjoy coming to, so to speak, but my point is, is that I want to make something more of an experience as opposed yeah. to you go there, you know, enjoy it, and then leave, and then, you know, forget it the next morning. I want something that, that really, you know, kind of sticks um, with people. That, that's out of my control, but... Um, is it fair to say there's a level of discomfort? Yeah, that that's you, something you that I've very, to... yeah, yeah, that I very much push for. Um, because my quote that always drives me when I make work and acting stuff um, is that theatre should, um, what's the quote? Uh, discomfort the comfortable and comfort the uncomfortable. Mm. And that's been my, I always go back to that quote whenever I feel when I'm performing or writing, like, is this too far? Is this too shocking or too bawdy or too uh, vaudeville? I don't know, you know, is this too much or not enough sometimes? Um, but it's always remembering that quote that, um, that you can actually bring a level of comfort through discomfort in a most ironic way. And those have been other shows that have inspired this. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, because we were saying earlier um, about, I remember seeing a show called This Is Not Culturally Significant, mm, Vaults. Yes. I saw that twice, I think. Um, and I think I met um, the, the guy that acts in it. So that's a solo show. Um, and yeah, so, and he performed it, he performs it completely naked. Yeah. And um, as opposed to Sonder, where it's monologue, 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 he'll kind of snap between characters. Um, so I had the, the idea of doing that for Sonder, but I'd much prefer a kind of storyline for each one, that each type of character tells a story. Um, but yeah, so I remember watching him, that was a huge inspiration um, for me to kind of go, um, you know, because I had the idea, it was kind of like one of those little pipe dreams at the back of my head, but it was something that, because um, Buffon clown, when I studied it at drama school, um, it was something that I really loved. Something about it I just loved. I love doing mask work. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, to really utilise those skills as opposed to just having them on your CV. Um, I think that's what you have to do as a creative individual. You use what you have while you can. Um, and so yeah, that was a real inspiration because that was really shocking. That was really, you know, that had a real bite to it. And I thought, well, People enjoyed it, you know, people really loved it. I loved it. And I thought, well, that would be something really interesting to, to do. Um, so his show is kind of like a Buffon clown mm. thing as well. And I thought, well, it's kind of a, it's a very old art form that isn't being used that much anymore. Um, apart from that, and another uh, show that is a huge influence on me is uh, Red Bastards, uh, who is more traditional Buffon. And uh, it's very much, you know, the show, a lot of it depends on the audience. There's so much audience interaction. Um, and yeah, so I, uh, long story short, I just wanted to make something that really um, just lands how one person can have an effect, um, whether it's a positive or a negative one. It almost, almost doesn't matter how one person can have an effect on a group of people. Not for the validation of it, but just as a kind of personal challenge to myself and something that I do really love to do. It's amazing fun. And have you ever felt with the audience there's ever any resistance or... Temptation? Definitely. Um, and I love that. I love it. Because, um, uh, firstly, it's something to be expected. It's an uncomfortable show. I'm not saying... Uh, very kind things at times yeah. to the audience. It's said through a smile, but that's the way that the clown will always get away with saying these things. Because um, you always have to kind of keep the audience on your side, but keep prodding them away and then keep pulling them back. Um, yeah, yeah, so the, so the clown will have to seduce the audience, so to speak, whether with comedy or, you know, literal seduction or whatever, 
tool the plan was using to kind of get the audience back. Um, in answer to your question, I think, yeah, you do get a bit of, bit of a resistance because, you know, discomfort makes people do very odd things that I've seen, you know. Um, and it's interesting, yeah, because I, I work a lot in an immersive theatre background. So I'm very, very used to um, audience members, you know, that sort of call and response thing and thinking your feet really fast with them. Um, so I think, yeah, with resistance, as long as they're reacting, I mean, of, of course, you know, um, if they're resisting too much, then of course, <laughs> stage management can just take you out. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, if there's their resistance, the nice thing about it is that the person on the stage isn't the only one to watch. Mm. You know, because um, when you're on stage with me, your reaction is arguably more important than mine. Because obviously what I've done is pre I've, I've prepared it, I've rehearsed it, I've gone through it, you know, rehearsed to an empty chair. Um, but your reaction is just pure and fresh and real and present. Um, and that, I imagine the audience were watching your reaction, or you know, for other people that I interact with, they're watching their reaction more so. Um, and for the clown, for Buffon clown, the idea is that the audience is the person on stage and that the people sitting in the audience are actually the performers for the plan. Um, so it's having that sort of mindset when you perform it. Um, but yeah, at the same time, you know, it's, um, these characters are pretty strong and pretty grotesque and pretty harsh and they can kind of handle themselves <laughs> in, in any situation. Um, but yeah, hopefully, yeah, no, no bad resistance so <laughs> far. Touch wood, but... Uh, are there but, moments where you feel you've gone too far? Um, like, yeah, the, whenever you're performing it, there is always that part of your mind that goes, oh yeah, just, just pull it back a bit, just pull it back a bit. You have to fight through that. Um, because that's firstly the point of the show. Because um, I think, I think theatre should be something that, that you question whether it goes too far or not. Because then, then that always relates back to yourself. As, so you learn something about yourself, whether it's a term of personal boundaries, um, how flexible you are in, you know, in responding to these things, and you kind of oddly learn or notice something about yourself that maybe, you know, because for example, if you find something funny when a character is doing something really uncomfortable, which happened, you know, um, then you learn something about yourself. I think from that, you kind of go, huh, oh, why did I laugh at that? Why did I laugh at that? Or why did I not laugh at that? Why did I, why was I not breathing for this point? Why was I, um... so there, there becomes that sort of sense of self-analysis after the show. Because people always, from all the feedback, people have always said that, um, that they kind of go in, into themselves after the show. Um, not that I, you know, not that the purpose of the show is to make people self-destruct or you know to to attack themselves but it's just to notice what's there yeah. not to put anything there or take anything away it's just for just to, to let people notice just what is under the skin that maybe they didn't know amazing and have yeah. you got anything else coming up work-wise uh work-wise um ceiling. yes so I will be going, uh, in terms of work, I think I'm, I'm going to go on a few holidays. I think I'm going to go, <laughs> I'm going to have a bit of a rest. <laughs> um, but yes, and then after that, uh, I want to do a lot more, uh, I think I'm going to go, go, going to go back into directing again. Um, so yeah, in October, uh, my, my other company, Loosely Based Theatre, we're going to be um, taking uh, our show to our show classified which is three dystopian plays um yeah we all you know three 20 minute plays set one after the other um all set in different points in the future um so that will be done in salisbury and then in the line of the unicorn uh i can't remember the dates in october early october um i mean yeah there's lots of other stuff that i want to you know try and kind of you know get my get my teeth into um yeah, because I want to do, I want to work on, I want to devise and create an immersive show. Because um, I work in a lot in immersive theatre, but I thought it'd be really cool to create one um, and kind of, you know, really shape it as to 
how I would <laughs> really want an immersive attraction to be. Um, so I had the idea of doing uh, an immersive um, Halloween show in October oh, in like uh, in a museum or something like that, or something similar, some sort of uh, old house or something like that, where the audience are free roam. Um, and then we have actors and scenes at certain times and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I always say, to, as soon as I have an idea, I, as soon as I have it, I'll just do it. Because um, life's too short. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then apart from that, it's just the uh, same as the rest of us, just embracing the unknown and trying to enjoy it. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you.